a footed serving bowl, a candle riser, a decorative cube, another candle riser, and some small art prints. These five spring decor DIY ideas are all under $5 each. I can't wait to share them with you. If we haven't met, my name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. I have tried this footed bowl DIY before, but this time I was trying something just a bit different. This plastic garden dish is from Dollar Tree and it can be found in the spring or the garden area. And this glass container that I'm using is also from Dollar Tree and can be found in the glass aisle that is usually closest to the craft aisle. So there's another aisle that has glassware on it, but it also has like the plates and stuff like that. And it's usually near the, you know, storage containers, but this one's near the craft aisle. And of course, I am removing the stickers on both, but I'm trying to be extra careful with the plastic bowl, and I'll kind of explain that in just a second. I used Rust-Oleum spray paint in the color Serenity Blue, and when I painted, when I spray painted it, I laid the plastic bowl face down and only spray painted the bottom. And as you can see, I was not even all the way around with the paint, but I wasn't too worried about it as I knew I'd be giving it another coat of spray paint after the next part. I'm using E6000 to adhere the glass bowl to the plastic bowl and as I mentioned I've done this project before and just spray painted the whole thing after I glued it but this time I was trying to make it so the inside of the bowl was still food safe. So after applying the E6000 I'm just going to center that glass container onto the bottom of the plastic bowl and then of course I'm going to let it dry overnight. Okay, this may be a little hard to see, but this there's like a little ring around, and that is where the E6000 is. And then it's it's kind of hard to show, but right here there looks like some sort of like it's been scraped or something. And that is how the bottom of the it's not on the inside, but it's on the bottom of the plastic. And then of course when I spray painted it, it just sealed it in. I think this footed serving bowl turned out beautifully. And the parts that I had mentioned where it, you know, quote unquote messed up, like the, where you could see the E6000 or where it was scratched, you're not even gonna notice it when you have items inside the bowl. I did not spray paint the inside of the bowl to keep it food safe. And I just think I love the color. It's Serenity Blue by Rust-Oleum. And I just think it's perfect for spring. This video is part of the five under $5 playlist. And you know, most of my DIYs are budget decor items. So my projects are usually pretty inexpensive, but I do love collaborations like this because I'm challenged to keep it under a certain amount. And in this case, $5 for each project, because you know, it just makes me think about how much I'm spending on each DIY. The host of the playlist are Missy from Crafty Cove DIY, Emily from Farm Charm Chic, and Mary Beth from MB Gray Designs. The link to their channels and the playlist is listed below. One of my daughters sent me the inspo for this next project. And the basic idea is instead of using Mod Podge, you would use cling wrap. And it, there's a distinction between the cling wrap and the saran wrap. But anyway, um, you would use cling wrap and some tissue paper or napkins. Now the cling wrap is supposed to act as a glue. And in all fairness, the inspo piece used a regular piece of wood and I'm using wood slice. So definitely not the same thing. But what you do is you put the wood down, you put some cling wrap on there. And then if you're using a napkin, you only use one ply of the napkin. Or if you're just using tissue paper, you just use the tissue paper. And then you put some parchment paper on top of that. And then you use an iron or a heat press and then you hold it down until the cling wrap stuff melts. And then you're supposed to be able to just sand off the edges. But mine was not sticking down. I'm not exactly sure why it wasn't sticking down, but it wasn't sticking down. And it left it, it's supposed to make it like really smooth and, you know, nice and smooth looking. Mine never did that. In fact, it's still, you know, a little bit wrinkly looking. And it's not that I mind that look, but I was thinking it was going to turn a little bit differently. But the wood slice has ridges and it's not like a completely smooth surface like the wood piece in the inspiration project. Anyway, 
So I sanded it down as best I could, and then I added four wood beads to the bottom to act as like little feet to this mini riser. I think this DIY turned out super, super cute, even though it may not have turned out exactly as I intended it to. But the wood slice was probably about a dollar because I bought it in a pack and I bought it 50% off. The little beads, they came in a big pack, so maybe a dollar for that. And the napkins came in a pack for a dollar. So about three bucks for this cute little candle riser that I'm just loving using in my home. Don't mind the other stuff on the screen because that is for another DIY. But what I try to do is maximize my time. So in this instance, for example, I was staining a piece for one project. So I try to grab anything else that I know that might need staining and I take care of that at the same time as well. And I wear disposable gloves because I'm trying to keep that mani looking as fresh for as long as possible. So the key to this DIY is that it is just so stinking simple and easy to do. So after the stain is dry, I'm just taking these little picks that I got from a Dollar Tree counter and I'm cutting them out. This is just a simple way to add some inexpensive but super cute decor to your home. I often use these on my tear trays. And then the next step after that is just to glue those picks onto the little cube. I took four different picks so it went all the way around the cube and like I said, it's just so simple and easy, but turns out so cute. Also, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would. And if you'd hit the bell so that new YouTube, new to YouTube could notify you every time I show something new, I really am truly so thankful for each and every one of y'all that have joined me on this crafting DIY journey. And I hope you're enjoying what I'm sharing. The total for this project really depends on what you have on hand. The wood cube is $1.25 and I already had the calendars, but if you had to buy them, you would spend another $3.75. I'm not sure how much the stain costs because I have a big old bottle of it and it's still lasting me for forever. But if you think about it, you're going to have a lot of leftover materials that you can use for other projects. So this is very budget friendly, less than five bucks. This wood circle is from Dollar Tree and I'm just giving the top of it a coat of white paint. I used folk art paint in the color Adirondack. There, I said it. <laughs> oh gosh. So this is going to be a riser for a candle and I'm using Waverly Wax in the color Antique and staining the bottom as well as the craft sticks and some other tower tumbling blocks. Now I'm adding some craft sticks to the bottom to give it just a bit of height. And honestly, I'm not sure why I thought I needed the extra height, but that's what I'm doing here. <laughs> so. And then I'm going to glue on four tower tumbling blocks to the bottom. Now for this part, I glued two tower tumbling blocks together end to end, and I did four sets of those. And then I set the riser upright and glued these sets next to where I had just glued the single tower tumbling blocks. And so this is how it's kind of looking. It's almost like it has double legs, I guess you could say. I decided that the riser just looked a little too plain. So I had picked up these rub on transfers from Dollar Tree and I thought it would look pretty on there. So of course I should have done this prior to adding the legs to the riser, but I didn't. So here we are. I took another wood round circle and traced out the shape. And then I just cut out that part of the rub on transfer that I needed. Then I rubbed the transfer on and pulled away the cover sheet. The wood round circle was $1.25, the Jenga blocks were another $1.25, and the rub on transfer was $1.25 as well. So $3.75 total for those items. I had the paint and the stain on hand, but if you add in another dollar for that, you're still at like $4.75, and you have leftover materials to use for other projects. All in all, this turned out so beautiful. I am so in love with that rub on transfer. You're probably going to see it in another DIY really very soon but I just love this one. I think it's so pretty. These canvases come in a three pack for $1.25 at Dollar Tree, and I'm giving them a coat of the folk art paint in the color Adirondack. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> I don't know why that, I struggle with that. Anyway, I had seen these prints, I'm pretty sure at Hobby Lobby, and I just took a picture of them. I scaled them down to size on my, my printer and printed them out. And then I used some carbon paper to sketch that onto the canvas. So this is not me. I could have hand sketched it, I'm sure, but um, I just thought this was an easier way to recreate a piece on a smaller scale. This next part is pretty self-explanatory. So I've traced on the design and I'm taking a silver or gray paint pen and just going over those lines that I created. And in a little bit, I'll take a black paint pen and go over the words. And that's it. I mean, it's not much to it, but it turns out so cute. You could for sure hang these pieces, but I wanted them to stand up. And so I just glued some tower tumbling blocks to the back of each canvas. For this project, I used a three pack of canvases. They were $1.25. I also used a paint pen in gray and black, and I had white paint and carpet paper. Those items I already had on hand. And again, if you purchase them, you can use them for multiple projects. So for sure, this DIY was under $5. And I think it just looks, I just think it looks beautiful. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope these beautiful DIYs inspired you to create something for your own home. And don't forget, if you want to follow me here on YouTube or over on Instagram, it's Our Gray House, but just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye.